Hi there, Nicole Frost of Frost Yarn. This video is on the super speckle, how to get all this wonderful speckling, like these photos here and these ones here, and also some other ones in a very small space without getting any brown out or crowding and still having a pleasing effect. So if you haven't already, I will link in the description below the, um, video for the original video on how to speckle showing four different ways as well as the video on how to speckle with a uh, squirt bottle um, and urea to thicken the dye as well as how to speckle with a mister and all of that stuff. So this one is building on those techniques. I highly recommend you watch those videos before we move on to this video so you can have the full array of speckle effects. Moving on, if you enjoy this video, and most especially if you're learning something from this that's allowing you to make your own yarn or improve on your business, I would really appreciate it if you helped me pay back what it cost me to produce this video. It is freely available to you, but that doesn't mean it's free. I have spent about 24 hours on this so far between hand knitting the gauge swatches and dyeing the yarn and filming the video and editing the video and tiling the images and captioning them. So if you can, a $3 donation that buys me a cup of coffee through Ko-Fi, the link is below and also here, um, would go so far in allowing me to continue to create content for this channel because these videos, the amount of yarn I could dye or the bats I could card in a day is a lot versus um, the amount I typically fundraise is like $125 per video. The yarn alone cost over $100. But the good news is I will be raffling off to one lucky Ko-Fi patron all the yarn that was dyed, or most of the yarn that was dyed, five skeins of it in this video. So um, please consider helping out because I can't continue to produce these for free, unfortunately, in 2020 if the donation amount is not even covering what it cost to produce the video, which by the way, each video costs me minimum wage, $500 to produce. That's minimum wage. So thank you. So I am going to be doing a video on the super speckle. So every stitch a different color, as many stitches and colors as we can get in, we're gonna be trying in the pot in a Schaefer tray, laid out on plastic wrap and steamed, and um, multiple processes. So if you're interested in any of these effects, then watch on because that's what we're gonna be learning today. So you are gonna need the following colors, deep magenta, pink orchid, tangelo, sunflower yellow, chartreuse, avocado, lichen or lichen, baby blue eyes, true turquoise, electric violet, and lilac from Dharma. You'll also want some tongs, your yarn, preferably a superwash nylon base, a Schaefer tray that's two and a half inches deep, a large kettle, and either a heater proofer like this to heat set your yarn or one of these um, trays. And you're also gonna want citric acid, which is next to it. So I got my citric acid from a place called Bulk Apothecary, and I think I paid 50 bucks for 50 pounds plus $30 shipping. So we're gonna put about a half a teaspoon and we're making our dye stock of citric acid. I would not recommend using any uh, vinegar. It's very expensive. The acid content isn't high. And frankly, you know, you're gonna get stinky fiber. It doesn't look good and you don't get as dark a color. Next, we're gonna add up our dye right here. You're gonna use the rest of this pink orchid. I'd say about a teaspoon of each of the other colors for a nice 3%. And now we're just going to fill these up with the hottest your tap will go. Now, if you notice <clears throat> that you're using the right amount of dye, the right amount of citric acid, the right amount of heat for the right amount of time, and you're still getting bad results, I suggest doing a side-by-side -side batch with distilled water and your tap water. If the distilled batch looks better, it's because you have sediment and other types of um, stuff in your water, like well water, ground water, that is interfering with the way that the fiber is taking up the dye. So you might have to switch to distilled or have a filter put on. Let's add some citric acid. 
we're going to soak our skeins and our Schaefer trays. And I like warm water so it will dissolve the citric acid but not burn my hands. Lay our skeins in and we want to slowly bring these up like so and then kind of arrange and then we rearrange our skeins and get them soaked. Then we're gonna strip off this excess water. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our round. We're gonna do two skeins in this under here. Now we're gonna be very careful, normally I do this two-handed, to lay our skein in a circle and try not to overlap any of it. So see how it goes like this? And low immersion, you just want enough water to cover it, no more. The higher the water, the blurrier your speckles are gonna be. So again, reference my eight ways to kettle dye video before watching this one. Almost all the water has been stripped off, barely damp and they're laid out in an S formation so that the dye is equally represented on the skein. Same thing with our pot, we're gonna steam this. Here's our dye stock. And then we have our lonely skein for speckling right here. And our dye stock, our pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. So let's get going. So we're going to grab some of this deep orchid. And we wanna only put the dye across the top so that the back is still white. So we're gonna do this with one of each of these 12 colors. Here we go with our second color. I think this is deep orchid or deep magenta. And here we are with saffron, spice, sunflower, Let's grab some chartreuse. That previous one was actually avocado. This is chartreuse, but that's okay. They don't need to be in any particular order for this color explosion. And this is our lichen or lichen color. Baby blue eyes. Turquoise. Now I'm purposely not working this in because I want the back to be white for speckling. And I think this one is either lilac or high, it's lilac. Yeah, lilac. Here we go with some hyacinth. And then some more of that pink. And the second pink, the darker one. Color. And we're going to finish with the sunflower. With a clean, dry, gloved hand, we're gonna pick up a tiny pinch, literally the tiniest amount, and we're just gonna speckle, I'd say a good 24 inches above. And look how light I'm speckling. Those are gonna grow once the heat and steam start happening. Now we're gonna do that with the rest of these. This is our finished result. That is absolutely as much speckles as you can pack on before it starts to bleed. On goes the lid. And into the shaper dish and cabinet it goes. Now we're going to speckle the other one. This one we're going to grab just our pink, orange, yellow across one side and our green, blue, purple across the back to prevent brown out and back staining. End up adding a little bit of fluorescent yellow because I wanted that sunflower yellow to be balanced with a brighter pop. Now we flip them into our green, blue, purples. It's a close-up of our green, blue, purple. Now it's looking a little bit dry, so I'm gonna grab my citric acid water and mist over the top. Now we're just gonna speckle all of the same colors except into the round, 
flip it and do the back side. Spritz in, back side ready for round two. And another little spritz, not too much, just enough to fix them in place. And finally, <clears throat> We have our purple, pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, just one side laid out. I'm gonna wipe up all this excess with a paper towel, like a so, so we don't get blotching and smearing. And then I'm just gonna wrap it up and throw it in the steamer. And then we're gonna come back when we rinse this out. And these are all nice and cool. So as you can see, that is a lot of speckling like a lot of speckles this actually looks really good this one right here so the real test does it bleed when we rinse it let's see here Nope. So we know we set it correctly, the right amount of heat, the right amount of acid. It's still really good to thoroughly rinse because you just put dye powder all over it and there's bound to be dye powder that didn't turn into a liquid and stick. So here is our single side speckle that was not in a pan but wrapped in a jelly roll. Now the back side looks pretty equally done even though I didn't do the backside so very little white patches like here and here this is the pink orange yellow on one side flip green blue purple on the back as you can see we have some back staining like here and here and behind the red which some people like some people don't so here is our in the round speckling and I did speckle front and back. So I pulled it out of the round and did the back side. But as you can see, there's really, really large white patches here. And I think way too many speckles in small clumps of an area. So we'll see how this translates when it gets knit up. So this is the dye stock on one side flipped speckled on the back. It has the most color in it. And we will see if this turns into clown barf or if it looks really good knit up, but this has a lot more color than the other ones do. So here are the four next to each other. This is speckled rainbow in order on one side, then steamed. This is painted on the back side and speckled on the other side. This one is speckled in the round um, and then flipped over and speckled again. And this one would be the one-sided speckle inside the Schaefer tray. This is how they all look together.